So we still in out the, well, no. We're receiving things out the trailer. So, so, uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> ID me for everything. They had 15 police cars around me one time and told me I robbed this lady. We'll talk about that in a minute. But <laughs> you made me go through the same struggle. Oh, <laughs> well, for sure. <laughs> Ten years later, I marry my wife, which is one of the owners of the fields I was picking here. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're back to sleep in the car. We sleep in the car, sleep in the car, sleep in the car. We sleep in a friend's house, back and forth. Anyway, lose everything. Sleep in the car. We sleep in another friend's house on the floor and everything else. I said, we'll never see this day again. Mm-hmm. I called DJ. I was like, you know this dude named Drake? This one I was in high school. Yeah. I was going to say, where do we begin? But I feel like the best thing is I'm going to let you introduce. I'll let everybody else introduce themselves. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself how you want to introduce yourself. And then we'll start from the beginning. Hey, I'm Big D, as they know. Somebody, you know, call me DJ's dad. I get that all the time. I don't even have a name anymore. I'm actually D, uh, Darren Sr. It is what it is. Uh, I'm ready for the journey that we about to go on. Okay. See so, what it do. Yeah. As you guys know, this is my dad. Um, so, start from the beginning. Before I was born. The beginning of what? Before I was born. Tell us about the times when you were... You know, let's say five, six, seven, eight years old. I don't know. Whenever you want to start from that point. Well, first and off. And then we got to talk about sneakers, too. So incorporate oh, that a little that's bit. We'll talk easy. about it. That's Go easy. Ahead. So uh, obviously, I'm a twin. A lot of people don't know I'm a twin brother. My twin brother named David is what it is, Deuce. I'm the oldest <laughs> by two minutes. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. People have literally introduced me to my twin brother because they didn't know we were twins right and you guys have different last names and yeah so, so that's, that's a whole too. other story i gotta tell you that a little bit later we can't okay, go we'll get that into yet. that later <laughs> <laughs> so oh so yeah we got different last names but uh and we don't look alike uh now now but he was when we was kids he was taller than me and bigger than me mm-hmm. and now i'm taller than him but he outweighed me so how tall are you well, I'm still 6'5". My wife say I'm only 6'4". Oh, uh, you shrunk? <laughs> but with shoes on, I'm 6'5 for sure. <laughs> Hope you didn't shrink everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I don't have that problem. They still call me Big Daddy. <laughs> okay, so, so so you're a twin. You were born in 71. Born in 71. I'll be 52 years old. So you, you remember the 70s vividly. You remember oh, the 80s sure, vividly. For sure. So give me that times growing up and talk about grandma, no. a.k.a. your mom as well. So... But I got to give you a little bit too on the shoe deal, in the shoe deal, because back in the day when we were kids, I'm telling you like this, like we had pro wings, kids, skips, shoes that was hard plastic on the bottom. Mm-hmm. No, like nothing comfortable. Like, like them was the shoes that would be like cracking. In half. Like split. Like, my twin brother one time had his shoes on because we couldn't afford them. We was poor. We was pretty poor. But he had his shoes on so long that the holes in the bottom of the shoe was so bad, we put newspaper in the bottom of the shoes. Mm -hmm. And we would wear white socks. You know, the white socks with the stripes on Mm us, like blue, red, whatever. Right, right, right. The print. From the cartoon section was on his socks from the sweat. Oh my so god! So you pull them off; it was literally on the socks. You had the like, comics <laughs> in the socks. Oh, my so, <laughs> literally, like we would put newspapers in the shoes because you would have no bottom in the shoe. Right. Like that's what we went to school with. Right. So this was like grade school. Yeah, early seventies. Okay, early seventies grade school, and then like y'all was twins, so there was like share. Oh uh, no, nah, we shared. Like everything, like school coat. Like if you get cold, you take that coat off and you give it to him. And then when you got cold, take it off and put, give it to him. One coat, two bodies. And then you know how we got a second coat? We went to Lost and Found and said, "Oh, that's my name inside the jacket," and take the coat. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody else claiming it. <laughs> it's been in there for a minute. So that's how we would get coats, because we didn't get coats every year. We get coats like every two to three years. Mm-hmm. We got a pair of shoes every two to three years. Mm-hmm. We got two pair of jeans per year and three shirts. Mm-hmm. And look at us now. We get to go hand out for <laughs> We get to go. We have the opportunity to go do yeah, stuff like well, that and give back to people, which is super dope. But it's a but journey again, to get, we'll, to, we'll get to, to here. To we'll get to that. Yeah. You know, it's a journey to get. It's a blessing. Like people don't realize like it's a blessing to be where we at today mm-hmm. from where we came from. Right. 
right? That work ethic and everything else that comes with it. It's not just handed to you. So also, you grew up in Portland, from Portland, stayed in Portland. Forever. Okay. That's it. And and so at one point, I was mowing lawns. I met this lady. She's like, oh, you mow my lawn? And I mowed a lawn. And this is when they had uh, the Nike Dunks first came out. Early 80s. The Vandals came out. Mm-hmm. Like when they first came out. This is before Jordan era. Mm-hmm. Like this stuff was coming out. And they was like, oh, okay. So the lady was telling me. I, at that time, I was like a nine size 9, 9, 10. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, I'll give you a pair of shoes to mow my lawn. I'm like, I'm finna mow the lawn. I'm finna get some Nikes. All right. But let me tell you this. I have to go backwards a little bit. Yeah. Right before that happened, before I started getting those shoes, my stepdad came in. My my mom married him like a couple times, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But he came in and we had saved up some money Mm -hmm. so we can get shoes. We finally, like, we gonna finally get some Nikes. We gonna finally get some Nikes. We was all happy. Because Nike was was hot at the time. And Nike is here. Right. But that was... uh. What's the other uh, shoe? Uh, the white ones with the red bot- with the red uh, at the bottom. What was it? The uh, what was it like kids or something? No, no, no. The, no, no. The Nikes. Oh, the Cortezes. The Cortez. Yeah. So when Cortez, right there, there's some Cortezes over there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So when the Cortez first came out, we was like, we finally finna get some shoes. Now we in the early '80s, right? Hell yeah. So we finna get these shoes, and then my stepdad come in there talking about some. What y'all doing? It's like, we all excited about to get these shoes. He said, y'all been getting shoes at volumes. You're going to keep getting shoes at volumes. I'm taking the money. Go gamble. (laughs) We didn't get no shoes. That's crazy. Like, literally, finally finna get some shoes. So how old was you at that time? This is early. This is like 84, 5 or something. So you like just about to be like teenager, just coming in like middle school time. Yeah. So like every shoe I got in high school, I paid for. Mm -hmm. Like... My mom never paid for a pair mm-hmm. of shoes for me. Like, my first pair of Nikes, I paid for. Right. Like, it was never nobody paying for those yeah. shoes for me. And you made, me, we'll talk about that in a minute, but <laughs> you made me go through the same struggle. <laughs> so, I'm mowing the lawns for the lady, and she gave me the free shoes. You're literally getting samples. Samples. Samples of all the shoes that come out. I was getting them from mowing lawn. Didn't even realize. What it was. What it was then no. to now. No. It was just like, I It was just like, oh, I got a new shoe and wear it. And then, I don't know if you guys know the real sample still. So back in the day, we modeled and did sample shoes because I was a cross-country team runner mm-hmm. too for uh, Adidas, Avia, and Nike. Mm-hmm. And so they would have us take the shoes after this lady. And we got into actual samples, mm-hmm. what samples really was about. Right, right, right. What samples really was about testing for us was testing. testing the shoe. Right. So we would run the shoes, run 500 miles per shoe and give the shoe back. Mm-hmm. We had to return the shoes. Mm-hmm. And then they could tell you how the shoe broke down, everything else. And so we did that for those three companies. And nobody else was doing that. Like, And you're low-key building the foundation of running shoes and sampling running shoes. Running shoes. Yeah. Uh, and again, not even realizing the impact of it nope. today. Nope. And how had it no clue. You had a part of changing the game for. And that started shoes in well. '86. 1986, we start testing shoes, running testing shoes. Crazy. <laughs> 500 miles, return the shoe. And not only did you do that, you guys won state. Yes. And my name's still up in the high school, in the gym, in on the, the flag. Actually, we got it. They just, I don't know if you, did I tell you? They just called and said they want us to do an interview. This is 30 years later. I oh, graduated yeah, yeah. 89. You're talking about that. To talk to the students yeah. now because they finna have a team again. Mm-hmm. We broke all the records that was 30 years old and older from from my crew. When I was the team captain and everything mm-hmm. else. And then now they got a new team that they think might be able to do something with what we're doing. So you were called at track. Yeah, I did my share. You could hoop a little bit. Oh, no. I was the man at <laughs> hoop. <laughs> I was the man at hoop. Hey, if nobody know, so, okay, I'll, I'll have to do this real quick. So back in the day, I was the man at hoop, but a lot of people didn't know that because I was pretty modest. I was, I'm a, I'm a Scotty Pippen. Mm-hmm. I'm not Michael Jordan. I'm Scotty Pippen. Mm-hmm. I, I did have a conversation with, uh, what's the name? They used to be the head of, uh, 
NBA. And I called him because I was still trying to get in the NBA. And he said, are you Michael Jordan? I said, no. He said, I ain't got nothing else to talk to you about that much. He hung up on me. Damn. Because back then you had numbers and you can call. This was way before the cell phone, big right, cell phone era. Right. You still could just make a phone call. Mm-hmm. You trying to get in the league and trying to do the stuff. I remember when that was all happening when right. I was a kid, when you was and going to camps. I stuff. went out to Philly. I got hurt in Philly, trying out NBA. I got hurt in LA, trying out in LA. But I was cool. Like, I thought I was going to be that man. Nah, <laughs> you was cold. I ain't going to lie. I was dunking hey. on fools, blocking fools. Hey, he was cold. Like, I remember back when I was a kid. <laughs> this dude got bounced, bro. Triple doubles. <laughs> he'd be he'd be a walking triple double wherever he went, and he would be like it'd be like a block party, blocking everybody, dunking yeah. on everybody, like literally, yeah. like crazy. Tell him your proudest basketball so, moment. No, I gotta give you two. <laughs> I'll tell the second one first. The first one is I got a I got tr- multiple triple doubles in a tournament. For blocks, steals, and points. People ain't doing that. Blocks, steals, and points. Not assists. <laughs> blocks. People not doing that. Right. Right? Now, the other one, there was another time we was out, and uh, my son was dressed. He dressed in head to toe. Because I used to model. When yeah, I was he a used kid. to model too. And then, uh, well, I could have we a family. Used Me, to model. you, and your sister. Everybody used we to model. We all model. I took yeah. second in the world, though. You did. Yeah, I took second in a row. Man, 43 you know, countries. I, some, I got some accolades too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I took second in a row out of 43 countries, but we ain't talking about that. <laughs> and that was on TV too. But anyway, we won't talk about that. <laughs> no, no, actually, let's talk about that. And let's talk about when you used to be on the Soul Train show or whatever it was called. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was on the yeah, show. I, I used to see the old clips when they'd be in the back. I was like, a dancer too. His, him and his, uh, my mom, I mean, his mom and my wife, my wife, myself, we used to be. On a dancing crew, and we used to do like, kind of like American Bandstand, like Soul Train, all that yeah. stuff. And we used to dance on the show. So like, like you see us on TV every weekend for that stuff. So I now you guys, to... you guys aren't surprised why I do so a lot of things. We could life. dance, we could hoop, we could run, we could play football, we yep. could do it all. So we do everything. So anyway, where was I? I don't know where I was. Oh at. yeah, second best moment. Oh, second best moment, which was really the first, which is the cake topper. We were uh, actually just finishing up a photo shoot for him, mm-hmm. and we were in the mall. We were shooting this photo shoot because they got they wanted some pictures, and he's head to toe. He got the J's on. He got the whole fit all the way to the towel in the back. And I don't know. He was probably five or something. I used to always have the towel in the back. Right. He had the towel in the back. You know how you got to roll with the towel in the back. Yeah. He got the towel in the back. And the lady goes, oh, who's your favorite basketball player? Because he's got on Jordan stuff, head to toe. He goes... My dad. <laughs> I was like, for the win. <laughs> oh, because back in the day, uh, it was no secret that when I went to the park to play basketball, I would always say, I will leave the court when I lose. Mm-hmm. And so that way, if I lose, I have to go home. But if I keep winning, I can stay long as I want. Right. Right. And that was fun for me because we'd be in the park for a minute. To the sunset. <laughs> Talk about, bro. They be like, switch teams, switch teams. Right. And I'm like, still we still win. win. Yeah. Give me new players. I don't care. I remember, I got to tell you this real fast. I don't know if I told you this one time. We was at the park down there. And this one dude, I was like, let me get him. This white dude, he was kind of moving funny. But he was cool dude. Like, you know, he was cool. But it was crazy because I was like, let me pick him up. And we win and we win and we win. And, and then this one black dude got mad at him. Because we kept winning. You know, the white dude just want to talk a little mess. Because mm-hmm. we winning. Like, that's what we're supposed to do. We all talking mess. Right. And he pushed him. And I was like, man, don't be pushing him. Don't push him. And the dude goes, man, why are you picking on me? I got a fake leg. This dude goes like this. We didn't want all these games. He had a fake leg. Now he like, you really <laughs> suck. <laughs> I was like, that was crazy. <laughs> I was thug for a little bit because... We had a little, we had a little first, first, I'm going to tell a little secret. <laughs> so when we were kids, we started berry picking at 11. Mm-hmm. So we picking strawberries, raspberries, <laughs> cucumbers. I remember I go out there picking uh, pickles, cucumbers, whatever you want to call them. And I was like, oh, I'm tough. I'm a man now. And 
I'm going to go with no gloves. If anybody ever picked them before, I'm going to tell you this. You need gloves. Right. <laughs> Wrap it up. It's like picking cactus. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I got home. My hands were so swollen just from pulling them. Because I'm a kid, but I'm trying to make the money. Right. But, no, we we picked everything. And there was a point that we was doing little things we wasn't supposed to be doing. You know, steal the candy bar or whatever. But there was... Frito Lay, I gotta tell this. One night to be one one place, one night to be another place, whatever. Okay, so you had your little schedule. Schedule. Especially on Fridays, you can go just get everybody. <laughs> Cause they got the whole trailers all set up for the weekend. Yeah. So we go and we fill them up so we can eat. Cause we trying to eat. Like we we wanna we want food for the week. Mm-hmm. Like we was broke. Like people don't understand broke. So we still in out the, well, no. We're receiving things out the trailer. Shut your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> so, Oops, it so, landed in this cart. Oops, it's in so my stomach. We, we put it in the cart, but here's where it got crazy. So we, this is two stories out this whole thing. So we get it. This is one day. I think it's a Friday. We get it. And we take it home. We're like, oh, we got basket full of stuff. We're like, oh, we good. We take it home. My mom's like, what are you guys doing with that stuff? I was like, what? She's like, we got stuff. She goes, put that in my closet. <sighs> so we put it all in the closet. She's like, why? And then she rationed out to us like she bought it. We was like, this is our food. Right. And she's like, this got to last. <laughs> you know, I ain't to eat like, this up. make this last. <laughs> so here's what's crazy about that whole story. This the other part of that. One of my partners... He going to tell his boys that he can't let us to go down there. So they go back the same night. His boy gets spooked. And while he in there, he's like, oh, man, man, I'm scared. I got to take a dump. (laughs) (laughs) He goes in there to go take a dump. They all get arrested. (laughs) Because he was taking too long. (laughs) He went in the building. Oh my god! <laughs> you got you got to shit outside of the back, <laughs> right? He found a door open. I guess the janitor was so happy was there to clean up or something. Oh my! But he didn't found a door open. He goes in. He's like, I gotta go take. It down. So, <laughs> that was bananas. Anyway, they call around to see where we's at. We didn't have nothing to do with it. We was all off the hook, right? But that's just a moment. In time that things could change for you. You right. could have a record for breaking an entry. For sure. This and that and the other. For sure. And you're trying to survive. And you're literally trying just to eat as a teenager. Right. You're talking about 13, mm-hmm. 14, trying to eat, bring home for the family so everybody else got something to eat. Mm-hmm. Now, I fished a lot. And I, I sold fish and everything else. But you yeah, only eat so much fish. I was about to say, and talk about picking the berries like y'all used to do. Literally from the family of yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> so okay, <laughs> rewind a little bit. So when I was picking berries and everything, and was one of the place we out there. Like I said, as a teenager trying to get it, uh, who knew that one day I would marry one of the daughters from that descendant from that family. <laughs> On the fields I was picking from. Used to pick on those fields. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. So you're talking about 20, probably 20 some. No, sh- I'm wrong. I'm talking about 20 years. No, At I'm talking point, about 10 years later. 10. Of the fields I was picking here. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, family descent is the owners of all those fields that I was picking in. Who knew? Like, that doesn't even make sense. Right. Just another part of the story. So, okay. Uh, all over the place. This is when I, I know. T- I'm sorry this, about that. No, nah, this, just... this is the part where I take a step back. We, right. we exit the story time. Right. And then we say, how are you feeling right now? Like, what is going on? 
you know, how you feeling with everything? There's just a lot of, everybody always got a lot of stuff going on in life. So what's going on? How you feeling? I think for me, I'm happy to position them in. Mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't trade it with nobody. I have a lot of stress. I have a lot of things going on. Mm-hmm. But I, most of that, I put that on myself. But for the things that I've done and I've put in place, and I feel like you, your sister, you know, now, May May, mm-hmm. grandchild, the things that I've done, I feel good about the positions. Mm-hmm. I feel good about, of course, I have no fingerprints. I've mm-hmm. never been arrested. I've never been in jail. I've never been, I've been in, put in a police car and got out the same day. <laughs> I've never went to the office. I got out immediately. So I've never put myself in a position enough or been busted for something I shouldn't have been doing. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy to position them in. And I'm hoping, like, you're in a great position, mm-hmm. I believe. Mm-hmm. You're trying to be in a better position. But you got a head start. Mm-hmm. Your sister got a head start. And so for me, I'm ecstatic of the positions that you guys are in that I helped that you never. I told you so, as a kid. I told you. Hold on real quick. I told you as a kid, I didn't want you guys ever to see the days that I saw. Right. You, pro- you probably heard me say that a hundred times. A million. Right? At least. I'm going to just say at least a hundred times. And if most adults would say that, I'd never want my kids to see the days that I saw. The whole world be better. Right. If you do things to put your kids in position, it just be better. So, so you say you put stress on yourself from things that you've created. You chose to put the stress on yourself from those things. Something that I do as well. But how do you like deal with the stress when you know, like, yeah, you got all these other good things, but at the same time, you still have to find ways to whether it's coping with it or whatever the words you like to use, like right. manage it. How do you go about dealing with that stress? Honestly, the funniest thing is I spend time with you. Yeah. I spend time with Cap Raider. I spend time, you know, because that's what means so much to me, mm-hmm. you know, with the family time. We all go do something. Right. Because that's my payoff. Right. When you was in school, what did I tell you? One of the biggest things I told you while you was in school, I said, I want to live through your eyes. Mm-hmm. How many Send times? me everything. I said, send me, to, y'all, I'm telling you, you, I'm telling you, I said this several times. Send me the times you're at the party. Send me the times you're, send me the video, send me whatever. We had a college parties, everything. Just send, yep. Then the days that I'm working late, yeah. the days that I'm stressed out, that's a day that like it brightens my day. Mm-hmm. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Like, some of the stuff you know, I dropped out of school. I was in college. Mm-hmm. I dropped out of college. We'll get to that part later. <laughs> on that other stuff. But I'm saying, you know, like, and I don't want to feed into that much stuff, but I'm saying, like, so when I see you guys just doing it and having a great time, like, I'm I'm winning. Okay. That's my win. Right. Right. Like, I'm happy. Okay. And, and like, we go golfing on a Thursday or we go do Whenever something. we get a chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? We go get a bite to eat, whatever it is. Like, like the other day you said, I don't care. You tell me what time. I'm dropping everything I'm doing. Spending more and more and more time with you guys as much as possible. <laughs> right? That's easy. Mm-hmm. And it's something you can't take back or get back. Mm-hmm. It's We get the time. Right. We enjoy the time. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Okay. So. That's how I enjoy myself. That's how you enjoy yourself. Okay. Now, and, and, and stop my stress. Stop the stress. All right. <clears throat> back to the story. So. You are figuring it out. You found the sample lady. Didn't realize it. You we made it to high school at this point, but in middle school, high school time, there was the phase of not having a place to live. You got to grow up real fast by the time you're 16 years old. Oh, for sure. So walk us through that. So we go to a time of. I was the last one. I had three brothers. I have a whole bunch of brothers, but from my mom. It was me and my twin brother, my older brother. And from my mom, it came to a standpoint that we went through some hard times. And she said, y'all got to figure it out because I'm just not going to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. And so we got to a point where my brothers was gone. My twin brothers is gone, moved out. We're talking about 16. So he moved out first. He moved out. And you're like, damn, I got to do this too. My other brother moved out. 
And now I'm coming up on 17 and I ain't moved out. Mind you, when we say 17, get in your own apartment. Right. Not a house, but get an apartment mm -hmm. at 17 years while you're in high school. Working. Working. Went in state. Yeah. And doing all this other stuff. Everything. You got a cross country track. I was on the cross country team, basketball team, um, even a cheerleading, swim team, uh, and team captain of every team that I was on. So when you're doing all these different things, you still got to, and I was a boss at 17. I was hiring and firing people at 17 years old. So when you look at like you're doing all these things, I got my apartment first, two bedroom apartment at 17 years old. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm out. I'm doing my thing. But it became the hangout. And this is early. 86, uh, 89, early 88, mid, 88. Yeah. So this is mid, late 80s at this yeah, point. Late 80s. Yeah. Okay. 88. So you're like, <laughs> I'm grown. I was the man. I'm grown. Hey, <laughs> if you got an apartment, two bedroom apartment, there's adults right now. With a two-bedroom apartment, mm -hmm. 40, 50 years old. Mm -hmm. You're talking about an apartment at 17, fully furnished. You paying your own bills. Buying new at clothes. At 17, new car. I bought the car off the spinner in the showroom at the Mazda dealership. So you're talking about the one that was spinning around like this? Yeah. How about that car? Yeah. So when you're talking about the age of doing things like you did that and having a good time... All the parties was at my house because all my boys didn't have no yeah, place. Do it. Right. That's like, I remember I was the first one driving. Everybody needed to ride. <laughs> right. I yeah. got a car in the house. Yeah. Two bedroom. Yeah. Where's okay, it going so down? Before that, though. <laughs> okay. Like, but... talk to me about mindset and like the dog in you that's like, I need to go get this shit because product of your environment says these are not the things you're supposed to be doing. People are going to sit there and go, oh, I would have, I would have. And people put their own ceilings on you. So they're going to say you can't do it because they didn't. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you didn't do something, if you want to do something by the time you want to and they're here and they ain't done it, they're going to tell you you can't do that. Right. So you don't want that. You just have to just block it all out and believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. I had my great grandfather and my grandfather believing in me as well as my coaches and stuff. And of course, my mom. But I'm telling you like this. I don't care who believes in you. It's not going to happen until you believe in yourself. Because you got to do it. You got to get up every morning and be dedicated to whatever it is. I can push you in the back and push you in the back. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you believe it. Yourself. So you, what do you think? What do you And think? stay consistent in believing in yourself. What made you like flip that switch? Because like definitely from even sports, from middle school to high school. Because like you weren't really involved in sports in middle school, right? No. Right. So you go from not involved in sports to now all these things, captain, winning stuff, doing things. So you already have to have a flipping switch in that, too. I was on no middle school sports. Right. So, <laughs> you know, there has to be a, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm saying. There, between, I'm assuming, eighth grade and sophomore year of high school, there had to be a flip switch somewhere. Switch flip somewhere. That's like. It's going to be deep. But like, I'm done with this shit. I'm ready to change. I don't want to get too deep because there's stuff you don't know I didn't tell you. Well, yeah, that's what I'm here for. We, I, we, I don't this is a DNA because... show. I'm here to hear what's up. Uh, what you mean? <laughs> this is no. This is this. It's deep because there was things that was going in. I, I grew up in the crack era, mm -hmm. right? And to, if you guys didn't know, watch anything about that era, it was the one of the worst times for black folks, minorities. Whatever you want to say. It was a, that whole era, early 80s through mid 90s, kind of late 90s. Mm -hmm. That whole era was bad. That was my time. Okay. So growing up in that era, you know, watching people, you know, I was part of the deal. Like, I'm going to hit the block. I try to do my numbers. My boys, you know, my brothers try to do their numbers. And I tell you this, my brother, my twin brother... He was one of the first at, at, at uh, 17 years old. No, take that back. I think he was 16 because he was at the out the house. And he was driving Rolls Royce already. <laughs> no license. <laughs> I'm sitting back seat. Watching it all. Mm -hmm. 
He was driving Rolls Royce at 16 to 17 years old. Getting the money on the block. Staying up late. And I'm like, oh, so when I'm coming up saying, man, I'm seeing this, that, and the other, I went through the thing and said, man, I got to hit the block too. So I try to hit the block. I'm hitting the block. And I said to myself, I'm part of the problem. Right. I start seeing people that was up here go down here. And I said, oh, wait a minute. You starting to become part of what you didn't want to see. Mm-hmm. So myself said, you have to get away from everything you see and start over Mm -hmm. and wipe the slate clean right because it's you're only taking people down while you're trying to rise right and so when you see certain things you're like ah nah i can't do this i can't do that and then i'm only working 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 and i work like sleep in class and work two jobs going to high school Mm -hmm. right we're and on the team. Yep. So when you're doing... I was working at KFC in the gas station. In the gas station, yep. At the same time... In high school. In high school, paying all my bills, and the captain of the team. Yep. Whatever team I was on. But that's what it takes, though. <laughs> and, like, that's what it... I have to commend you for that effort. Because for me, I could say, all oh, work hard and everything. But it's a different type of work hard. Right. And it's a different scenario. Like you said, you set us up to be way far ahead of you. So it's yeah, like, sure. my work hard is like, oh, do I want to make a couple hundred thousand this year or do I want to try to be a millionaire? Right. Yours is like, all right, I'm not about to be starving no more and I'm about to be on my feet from here. You know, it's right. a whole different type of right. thing. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's different. So Man. I'd have to applaud you for that for sure because that's, I mean, I don't know. I feel like you put that in me to be able to do the same thing. But I'm glad I don't have to do that thing in particular. Oh, for sure. I always said for you and your sister, I want you guys to have a head start. And so that way you got a better chance to finish the race, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to start behind, then it's hard to finish the race. Mm -hmm. But I remember when my brothers was driving the fattest cars, Twitty ZXs, Mercedes. I'm talking about Mercedes. When brothers wasn't driving Mercedes back in the day. Right. Like, if you guys go back to the, check this out. You could do this later. Y'all do this. You go back to when Diddy, Pac, Snoop, uh, Dre, whatever. Go back in their videos. Do this. Go back in their videos and watch the cars that they was driving. My brother was driving those cars. Right. In the early 80s. Not selling records. Right. So it's just like. (laughs) Again, product in an environment, and that's that same environment is going to be in you every hood did, throughout the 80s. And it's like hard to get out of it. I saved my money up and bought a $600 bicycle. I remember that. You used to tell me all the stories about the bicycle. <laughs> I still have the bicycle at the yeah. house. I bought was $235 a month. <laughs> My rent was 235 That's like buying like a... <laughs> that's like buying an $8,000 bike now. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So I bought a $600 bicycle. And that story's crazy. I got to tell you that a little bit. I got to tell you a little bit of that story. Oh, you. So a little bit of that story, I went in to look at that bicycle. And I wanted that bicycle so bad. I wanted that bicycle... And I'm just straight, legit, working these jobs, blah, blah, blah. And I told the dude I want that bicycle. I said, I'm going to come back and get that bicycle. He said, oh. I go there to get the bicycle. It's gone. It's not in the window no more. It's gone. I'm like, I sat on the side of the building like I'm tripping. Like, I've been wanting this bicycle. I saved up all this money to get this bicycle. And I can't get the bicycle. And you know what happened? It was an old white dude, and he was cool. Just cool, right? And he come outside, he see me, he says, what's going on? I said, man, I wanted that bicycle so bad, and you sold it. And he goes, no, I got it in the back. Okay. I went in the back, he had the bicycle. He said, I knew when you told me you was going to get that bike, you I was going to come and get you. it. Yeah. He saved it. 
It took me months to get that. But he saved it. He believed in me. Mm -hmm. So I knew that at that point, anything I worked for, I could get it. Right. Get people around you. They believe in you. Get what you want. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. Makes sense. But that was that. But anyway, going back to the whole thing, it's like you, when people believe in you, you believe in yourself. You have to get up in every day and make sure it works. You can't sit there and all the time just like, oh, I got this. I got this. Nah. You have to really just do it. You can't talk about it because there's no results. Right. You have to get up and do it every morning. Mm -hmm. And if you, you yourself, wifey, my daughter, everybody's now, right? If you don't do something every single day towards the craft that you're trying to build, it's not going to work. Right. And so that's what I did. Every day I worked hard, da, 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 da. And I'm here today enjoying it. Still doing it. Loving yeah. it. So. Okay, so <laughs> you get through high school and you got your apartment still. Uh -huh. But then you got something that goes on. And next thing you know, you got nowhere to live. Oh, my God. No, it was on the tail end. So I just started college. You know, it's the beginning of college. And uh, everybody knows school starts. Halloween comes right after, right? Mm -hmm. I'm fresh in school. Got my apartment. I'm working. Your team. And then I'm like a, I don't know what you want to call it, a runner up for the hoop team. Mm -hmm. So I'm in this, my whole setup is for these two things to go back into school. I go to school Halloween night. I go to a, poly, a college party. I come home. Everything I own on the 31st is out in the front yard, burnt up in my two-bedroom apartment. The other apartment caught fire. Mine's caught fire. I have nothing. They have the thing that says, oh, you can, you can sleep at the Red Cross. You know, Red Cross will help you call this number, mm -hmm. right? So I called the number and they said, well, we can't help you because you got a job. I go, no, I just, I just paid all my rent. I paid all my food. I did everything. And what burned up was my kitchen. So I have no food. I don't have anything. Right. And so this is where I'm going. And they said, oh, okay. So then I said, oh, okay, cool. My brother's out of town. He's doing his thing, traveling the world, doing his thing. He got his place. I'll go to his place. I said, because I was checking the mail there. I got the keys. I go over there. And the guy goes, the manager goes, who are you? I said, that's my twin brother. I said, my place burned up. So I don't have no place to stay. I'm going to stay at his place. I've been watching the mail do this and that and the other while he's gone. He said, oh, where's the key? I said, right here. He took it from me. He said, you can't stay here. <laughs> You're not on the lease. I go, "What? wait, what? I can't stay here either. So I said, okay. Your mom, not my wife yet. She down with me. Let's go. We have nowhere to go yet. So I said, babe, let's go to my brother's house, my other brother's house. I go to my other brother's house. He ain't home. He ain't home. He ain't home. That was the first night we slept in a car. We didn't have no money. We shared a bag of Funyuns and a, a 32 ounce big gold from 7-Eleven. That was dinner. Like we're going to, we'll tie it over and he'll get it right. <laughs> I'll never forget. So then my brother says, hey, you can, you can stay at the house. Excuse me. It's like two days go by. His girlfriend, which became his wife, says, hey, the manager said you guys can't stay here. I'm like, What? Joe said we could stay here. No, you can't stay here. So we go, okay. So here's what happened. I goes to the manager. I say, hey, man, my place burned up. This is where I'm at. They already took the keys from this. I tells him the whole story all the way back. He goes, this is a nice story, but I didn't even know you was there. I said, what do you mean you didn't? He said, so whoever told you can't stay there, telling you you can't stay there. It was her. Right. She said, you got to go. He said, she said, you got to go. You got to go. I said, what? 
So now we're back to sleep in the car. We sleep in the car, sleep in the car, sleep in the car. We sleep in a friend's house back and forth. Anyway, lose everything. Sleep in the car. We sleep in another friend's house on the floor and everything else. I talk to this lady. Help me get into an apartment. We get an apartment. Within one year, now I'm 19. Because this was 17, 18, 19. So the way this went down, they said, I'm starting trying to figure out how to buy a house. I said, we'll never see this day again. Mm -hmm. So literally... I talked to this lady and I said, I'm going to buy a house. She calls me. She goes, oh, I got this house. I got this house over the phone. I literally told her I'll buy it. I haven't seen the house. You told me what it got. I want it. Mm -hmm. I still have the house today. I'm still living it right now. Mm -hmm. From 20 years old, you became six months years old, six months. And I bought that house. I still live in it right now from then. But I bought the house over the phone. And I told her, I said, we'll never go through this again. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't never had to worry about address change, phone number. You got the same phone number you ever had. You ain't never changed. Like, some of y'all out there. <laughs> a lot of people was like, bruh, new phone number every six months. Was like, but you didn't have the same old? number for 25 years. Yeah, how do I stay in touch? You're 32. <laughs> about to be. So my point is. same carrier my, phone's, my phone yeah. got stolen and then y'all took my phone away from me and then yeah. when i got a new phone they gave me a different number yeah because yeah, yeah. y'all had switched so yeah because we switched but long but basically story short, i had the same number my yeah life. but long story short it's close but you know what i mean like you wasn't hopping and running from nobody no we're in about to build oh it's turned off again right like how many of y'all that had the phone turned off just because yeah and it's it's funny <laughs> too because like for you you're like excited about that thing like yeah i like y'all y'all got the phone turned off and stuff but it's like you know what it felt like to be in that position oh, so it's sure. okay to be like yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying Some it's a big deal interpret it and be like oh you're trying to talk bad but it's like no i was in that same position as you and and that's what i'm saying you understand right like you understand when you can't pay this bill can't pay that bill and and you're struggling just trying to get through it like i've been through that but mm -hmm. I made sure it was never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like if anybody know me, I like I work some crazy hours. But we eat at some nice places. All the time. We travel to some nice places. It's not all because of me. I will never say it's all because of me. But I will say that I'm part of the reason why your work ethic is the way it is. Your sisters, some of the people around us mm -hmm. that we actually talk to on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say who. But so that way, he was like, "You taking credit for what I did? I'm not doing that." No, yeah, I mean, for sure, but you've had a huge role in some of the success. people around us. And honestly, for those that don't know, my parents are still together, and they both have had a huge impact on both of our lives in same ways, different ways. Uh, they've overlapped in some things. They've had unique uh, traits that have helped both of us in different ways. So there's a lot of different factors from both sides. Yeah. Uh, for anybody that's like wondering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so so it's not all one sided, but we came from two different sides of the track. For sure. Right. And so you're you get two different points of views and cultures and everything. So no, I love it. Um, we have been able to help a lot of people in the positions we're in and continue to be able to help people. And so I love that part. I just love it. So you're going off about, you know, the homeless bouncing back and forth and everything, but like Again, very hard time in life. What was going through your head mentally every single night, falling asleep? What do you got to do? You know, like all the different things. Because I'm sure you are filled with a ton of different emotions, right? Right. So what was what was you what was you thinking at that time? I can't. I keep saying the same thing, but again, I didn't want you guys to see what I saw. I don't. But we weren't born at the time. We weren't <laughs> no, even an no. option yet. No, and it, it, that's my point. I knew I was going to have kids. Right. I knew that certain things was going to happen in my life, and I knew that when I get into that position, my kids aren't going to see what I see. Right. My kids are not going to have the problems that I have. Mm -hmm. They'll have their own problems and struggles because nobody can say, oh, it's just perfect. Right. So you're going to have those, but those some of those things are self-inflicted because you're trying to get somewhere, do certain things. You ain't never worried about starving. Right. Right, your friends, I got to switch subject for a second. 
Your friends and y'all would show up to the house with your own box of cereal <laughs> and eat because we had like 15 boxes of cereal. Right. So, <laughs> all right. So, for those that don't know, um, I guess we'll jump forward a little bit to yeah. deeper into my life at this point. But, uh, yeah, when I got to high school, or middle school, grade school, any level of school, especially high school, because, you know, now we're growing, right. becoming men. Middle uh, starting in middle school because Pop Warner, y'all was playing yeah. football. All the homies would pull up. My house had always been like the safe spot. And like you said, like him creating an environment and my mom creating an environment uh, for us to just be comfortable and thrive and be creative and do whatever we want to do and have fun and give us opportunities to like do fun things that don't want us, to, like we don't even want to be out in the streets and go do stuff because it's like, I'm having more fun here at the house. Like my right. homies over here, like we don't need to be out in the streets. Right. So, like I was just talking to that um to Alexis about that and I was like I know we people talk about that and they hear the story and right <laughs> and I was like now think about it like this my parents were spending Three dollars on a box of cereal, four dollars on a box of cereal. Right. But how much does it cost for me to be in some literally bad activity out in the streets or end up hurt in the hospital or whatever? Right. How much is that gonna cost? Tens of thousand dollars or potentially even my life. Right. right. So for them to spend three dollars, four bucks, uh, or twenty dollars or thirty dollars on ten boxes of cereal, but look, look at the return that they're getting you know on all their investment. Friends, you know everything that's going on, everything. They get to weed through all my homies. Hey, I don't like them. Da, 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 like, da, telling me all this stuff. And this so and so, and he like especially my dad. He always be like so and so is gonna be like this when you get older. So and so is gonna be like that when you get older. And then when I got older, I was like, "Yep, you was right. They did this. They did that. They did this." But like for me to be able to see that too at a young age and be like, you know, even like from grade school, middle school, it'd be like by the time you get to here, like you're probably not gonna be around them or this gonna, yep. and it's like not like you're wishing anything bad on them or anything like that. It's just again based off of your experiences from the past, the environment that you've been on, and understanding like, hey, I should share this information because I don't want my son to be like tricked or fooled for something, thinking like, right. oh, everything's fine and dandy. So it definitely made me more aware of a lot of things like growing up. But yeah, back to the box of cereal thing. It used to always go up at my parents' house. Every snack you can think of, you can pull up, you can get some snacks. Homies will pull up to the house. We still got go, snacks. Go straight to the kitchen. <laughs> I'll go up to my room. They be in the kitchen eating. And then they come up 20 minutes right. later and be right. like, hey, what's up, bro? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like and I wouldn't you even, even be know tripping. He was at the house yet. Yeah, I wouldn't be tripping. Like, at least bring me something upstairs. Right. Like, yeah. But yeah, all right, go ahead. Nah, this is good, man. I'm just saying, like, you know it. Some of your friends, quite a few of your friends, like, know it. It's like, you want to have. And now you're in a position now you're married, you know, you're starting to see your friends, everybody having kids and all this yep. other stuff. And you know, I can't say I'm the best father ever, but I was the best father I could be. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I'm saying to you and everybody else out there and some of your friends, be the best father you can be. Right. Don't try to be somebody else. Mm -hmm. Be the best you can be. Because you got a different background. You grew up different. Everybody grew up different. So there's things you're like, well, I would never do that. And then, well, you don't see what I see. Right. So you're not going to think the way I think. Right. But now you've seen what you saw and think the way you think. Right. Be the best you can be in your position. Right. Right. And then, like, we would get in trouble, like a whooping in trouble. Because if we kept saying we was hungry, mm -hmm. we was hungry. Right. But we couldn't keep saying we was hungry because mm -hmm. there wasn't no food in the house. And then when you have food, if you was messing with the food, what happened? You get in trouble for that. And then I remember one time me and my brother, we was arguing, whatever. And we threw ashes. My mom used to smoke cigarettes. She smoked a pack and a half a day. And we would throw, we threw ashes. <laughs> we threw the ashes and cigarette butts in each other's food because we was just getting mad at my twin brother. And my mom came in and said, what y'all doing? He said, we just looked. She said, oh, no, you eating that. You ain't wasting that food. We literally <laughs> had to take the cigarette butts out because she wasn't going to let us eat that. Or we had to eat the rest. <laughs> and then, uh, or when you didn't eat your cereal in the morning. Oh, my God. If you didn't eat your cereal in the morning, that's what you were going to eat when you got home from school. 
cornflakes. <laughs> Chai cornflakes sitting in the milk in the refrigerator. All day. All day. We make powder milk. Like, I don't know if y'all ever had made powder milk. You I haven't made powder milk. Never made no powder <laughs> milk. <laughs> I just heard about the stories. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, so back in the day, they used to have the thing you go to the schools and they give you free, free milk, free cheese, free butter, free rice. And everybody, like if you old school, you remember that five pound stick of cheese. And then long story short, you get this milk and it's in a powder. It's in a box like this, like white box with blue writing. And, and it just said milk. <laughs> it just said milk. <laughs> it, it, it's in a box. And you, you sprinkle it in there. You mix it with water. And yeah. you got milk. <laughs> got milk? <laughs> it just said milk. Milk. <laughs> so, so we would have the we would have the milk on the cereal. And then sometimes we didn't have that because they didn't have money tight. And you know how no milk? Just use water. We use water on Captain Crunch, on cornflakes, everything. Just add a little water, some sugar. You don't need no milk. And you'll get used to it. I'm telling y'all try it. You be like You get used to it. <laughs> Now we're like almond milk, please. Yeah, you're like <laughs> almond milk. I want coconut milk. Come on. Unsweet, unsweetened almond milk. Almond milk, please. <laughs> I don't even eat cereal anymore. <laughs> we, we, no, <laughs> like, this is the craziest thing. It's like the box just said milk. <laughs> <laughs> the box. <laughs> oh man, oh, that's okay. crazy too. Because like that just made me think about like. I remember people come over like, you don't got the bag of cereal? You got the box of cereal? No, we had boxes. Like, no, we got the real Captain Crunch. Like, yeah. the real Frosted Flakes. The yeah. real Coco. The milk. bag is said Crunch Berries. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd be like, oh, I can't <laughs> No, it's said Crunch Berries. It's just Berries. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. It'd be something. I'm like, oh, no, I can't do that one. Um, okay. So, we're, we're kind of <sighs> all over the place. We got to get back on task. I know. We back on task. All right. So, you get through high school. You bought the house. I'm, I'm and you're like, yo. I'm from homeless to literally buying my first house. And I'm about to be, I'm about to change the game. What am I going to do? And I was working and working and working to change the game. And I didn't, I wasn't in the streets. I wasn't doing nothing. I was working two full-time jobs, right? Working for the steel factory and the mattress company. Mm -hmm. Two full-time jobs. The police tried to set me up. Saying that I was a drug dealer and this and that because I had bread and I bought a house and they send people over there trying to get me to sell them something, this and the other. And it was crazy. Like, that's a whole nother story. Yeah, because, I mean, growing up now, this is in the early 90s. Like, Portland is not what you like. I mean, Portland's starting to revert back a little bit, mm -hmm. but. The Portland that people know now, the nice progressed Portland, it wasn't like that before no, in the early. It wasn't 90s. predominantly white either. No, in the neighborhood we live in, no, it was it was pretty bad. It was pretty black and it was pretty bad, and it was crazy because the police, we it was kind of like a sundown town. So, like, if anybody know about sundown stuff, like, ain't nobody supposed to be in that neighborhood. If you just nationality, you ain't supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be in by this time. Mm -hmm. And so even the white folks, if they came over into where we was living at and they was past there about 830, they was getting pulled over because they figured they was there for drugs. Right. What you doing over here? Yeah. You shouldn't be here. You there for drugs or hookers. Take your back. Right. Right. You ain't here for nothing else. Right. You ain't supposed to be here. And so going through that stage was bananas. And like I said, they did everything to try to get me, pull me over and try to arrest me for stupid stuff. and. ID me for everything. They had 15 police cars around me one time and told me I robbed this lady. <laughs> I said, you robbed this lady at knife point. And I said, no, I didn't. I didn't do nothing. I just, came home I just dropped work. my wife off at the <laughs> house. Right. I'm headed to work. Man, they followed me and did everything. They had me, man, cuffed and stuffed, ready to go. And the lady, 
I'm glad the lady wasn't prejudiced. She kept saying, again, when we started this, we were talking about me being 6'5". The lady kept saying, he's too tall. Right. That's not <laughs> him. And the police was like, you sure? You sure? This is literally like Rodney King was happening. Like For sure. Like You got to remember, 19- OJ, Rodney King, all this stuff is happening at this time. So For like, sure. Portland wasn't no different. Like, there was still stuff happening. Yeah. And they tried to do all this stuff to me and they, they tried to take me down. And I was like, no, no, no. And the lady was like, she was like, that's not him. And they let me go. This is when we had beepers when everybody had the pagers, mm-hmm. the beeper, paper, pager, whatever you want to call it. And I had the big cell phone like this. I had that big old cell phone like this. <laughs> I remember that. With the, with the big rubber antenna. Yeah. And, and he was like, what are you doing with a cell phone? Right. What, what are you doing with a pager? And I was like, what do you, what do you mean? It's like, yeah. You had a car phone in the 90s, I had too. A, I had a phone with a bag like this. In the car? In, <laughs> in the, the bins? Remember that? I remember that. That, that. that Mercedes was clean. Yeah. He used to always have the S500s. Yeah. He had the- I got the, one now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he still got one. I was just thinking about the big body back in the yeah. day. With the, the bulletproof coupe, windows, all this stuff. The cream coupe was crazy. The crazy. That big black one. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. So, <laughs> no. So, we went through that era, and it was growth for me. And I was so happy that I wasn't part of that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. They couldn't get me. Again, 1990, I got the car off the showroom floor. So I got this brand new truck. I got a new house. I'm here. They're trying to, police are trying to set me up. There's no way this can be your house. Right. You got a three bedroom, two bath house, blah, 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 full garage. Starting a six figure <laughs> business on the side as well. Right. And so when they looking at you like, there's no way. This can't be honest. Mm-hmm. You're 20 years old. Right. Nah, you're doing something wrong. Right. So I made it through all that, doing it the right way, doing mm-hmm. it the honest way. Again, you're doing the right way, the honest way. You know, everybody around you, and I tell you all the time, like everybody around you ain't got those friends just doing the crazy stuff. Right. But that's part of that, seeing it. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see the days I saw. Right. And so, all right. So you're progressing in that. You are, uh, you're learning how to remodel your own house. Oh, early yeah. 90s. <laughs> that house has been through some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you get into like low riders and cars because you like cars. Yeah, yeah. Right. So. Somebody like you, the six figure sneakerhead. It's an eight week program that takes you through all the steps that you need to know. We have a full community where you can engage with everybody else that's going through the same program as you. We have monthly live meetups where you can connect with me and other members on the inside, and we set goals for each other and hold each other accountable. Also, we give away a free pair of shoes every single month with different challenges. If this is something that's for you or you're looking to take your game to the next level or even flip your sneakers to turn that into real estate, this is the place where you need to be. I can help you with finding loans and remodeling properties and getting yourself on the right path to become a millionaire if that's something that you desire. If this sounds like something for you, hit the link down below in the description and get signed up today. This is more than just sneakers. I wanna see people grow and succeed in all aspects of life. Let's get back to the podcast. Again, like I said, I bought the truck in 1990. I be, I, again, I always got to be captain or head honcho, just who I am, just because I like to be, I like leadership. I like pressure. Mm-hmm. When people can't take it, I'll take it. So I had the car club. I want my car club. We put that together. Hats off to wifey. She did a hell of a job on help putting that together with me. And we had the car club called Peer Pressure, mm-hmm. which started from my truck. Mm-hmm and led on to our car shows and everything else it used to be so crazy so i grew up (laughs) i grew up in it so for me i saw like entrepreneurship at its finest hard work at its finest parents working jobs uh doing this on the side hustling doing all these things um so for me it was dope to see like i would be the one like when the cars would pull in that we get like the custom water bottles, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get the custom water bottles. And I would be like checking them in and handing them their free water bottles and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I remember we'd be printing out cases of water bottles and trophies and all this stuff. And they do the contest and yep. they had the watermelon eating contest and a wet t-shirt contest, all this stuff. I remember all that stuff. So I got to tell you this. So I was slick. The water bottles 
weren't technically free. Oh, okay. Well, I don't remember. I was like, I know seven. you was. couldn't sell the beer okay so i was selling the water bottles for five dollars a piece mm-hmm. fill it up with beer <laughs> i was buying the water bottles for 39 cents right i'm selling for five dollars beers <laughs> all profit and when they want another one no free refills you gotta buy another one <laughs> water bottles on deck <laughs> so that's why we printed so many water bottles right we had cases of water bottles, you remember it like right. so many. Well, I think I wonder if we got any more of those, Damn. those big red ones. Yeah, <clears throat> but we had so many water bottles, and we print them every year. Mm-hmm. And so we were selling the beer, but we couldn't sell the beer. It was so dope because you got. To see that, that was definitely like a huge foundation for me seeing that and experiencing like entrepreneurship yeah. at a young age and understanding like oh you could do this because then later when i got to high school then what like you started the restaurant and you're in the music industry yeah. managing artists and had a we had a studio at the house again you're supposed to tell these stories now ah! <laughs> so go ahead go wherever you like next <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i got stories like crazy oh i gotta give you he said i was in music stuff i have to tell you this real quick my best story. No, I got I got a couple, but I'll tell you my story with Prince. I knew that was the one that was coming. I was going to say. Should I tell the one with the game? Either one. Or Drake. <laughs> or Drake. Uh, or, or Kim Kardashian. Or, or Kelly. Oh we'll stay God. off the R. Kelly Kim one. Kim Kardashian. <laughs> All right, go ahead. It's your story. No, so I had. So back <laughs> in the day, I was hooked up with some good people. Um, out of LA. Yeah. And so anything that came up, they would always call me first. Mm-hmm. So any big shows, any new artists, when they doing their radio sets and they want to come in, like we would go to the radio station, meet up with the artists, Ice Cubes. Uh, when the, I can't think of the girl's name all of a sudden right now that had the song, You Can Do It, Put Your Back Into It. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so we met with her, like, we, like uh, DJ Quick. When you're an honest dude. Right. There's shady promoters. Right. Right. Oh, which one should I say? I don't know which one I say. Just give us a couple. Okay, I'll I'll go. Okay, I like this. Oh, I got to give you the Drake one. All right, give us a Drake. So the Drake one, the Drake one, I called DJ. I was like... You know this dude named Drake? This one I was in high school. Yeah. And Drake didn't have an album yet. Y'all check the records of what I'm telling you. Oh, man. Drake didn't have an album yet. Drake had songs. And Drake had four or five songs that was on the radio. I could be wrong. It might be three or four. But I'm seeing four or five songs that was on the radio. Mm-hmm. And Drake didn't have an album yet. Right. But he was popping. Right. Right? Yep. And I ain't going to say the numbers. That I was supposed to have a hookup with. But I will say this. The opportunity was telling me, oh, you know, Drake's coming to town. You know, you want to do his show in Portland. Oh, and I'm just saying, just so the people know, I was a full supporter of this happening. (laughs) Because I just had a feeling that Drake was going to be the one. Yeah. And so he's like, he's coming to Portland for the first time. They called me first. And he was small. He was small. At the he time. was small. Yeah. Right? Drake, no. If you ever see this, Drake, no, you know the first time you came Drake, to Drake, I know you're watching this. It was you your know, first don't time. Don't act like you Portland. don't be watching the DNA show. It was supposed to be with show. me. Hey, don't act like you don't be watching the DNA right. show. So anyway, <laughs> so this would happen. And I'm trying to do this. Okay, I got to blame the wifey for a second. But I'm trying to do this with the wifey. And she said, nah, this is probably not a good investment. Because I had took some licks. Right. Yeah, you I, lose sometimes. Right. I, I take some losses and I take some wins, but I'm still here. So I know I'm like, I can get some more wins in me. So she was like, oh, I ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. And he's like, 
I talked to everybody at the school. This is go crack. Yeah, he told me. And the Whoa. next day, the next day, I was telling all the homies, I'm like, yo, we're about to get drank here. This shit about to be live. Like, the, And this was close to your, was that close to your 16th birthday? Hey, sweet 16s. We'll talk about I that. I think it was close video. to that same time. It was. Cause, because cause I think we might have even We was trying to incorporate it or something? We might have. We was thinking about having them at my party. We was trying to incorporate because I remember it with we your was stuff. At the venue because we I was like, about we outside. could probably do it and didn't do it like this. Yep. So. Big old. We got this big old place. This warehouse. Right. We rented this warehouse. And we threw my, per- my birthday <laughs> party there. birthday. <laughs> Sweet 16 was crazy. Y'all remember on hey. MTV? Remember yeah. MTV? They they started oh. Sweet Sixteen, and we had OG One. Shout out AG, OG One. He he might see this too. Shout out OG. But he was on the radio. He per, he announced your stuff on the radio. Yep. Right on at the time on the hottest radio station. So it's all over the radio. His Sweet Sixteen. I'm trying to do this. Wifey like, nah, I don't think that's gonna work. I don't think you should do that. We didn't end up doing it. Somebody else did it, and it cracked. That's crazy because that could have been the root <laughs> to that relationship. But which again goes back to like good people, good things, opportunities get brought to you. Again, yeah. you can't win them all. But at yeah. the same time, uh that came simply because of good people, good relationships. Yeah. yeah. And so the people I knew said, Don't worry about that. You know, you don't want to do that. You know, we got something else coming. So there's some other things coming up. Long story short, I ends up getting with Another friend of mine at the time, we doing music business stuff, kind of setting up shows together, doing this stuff. So Prince is supposed to come. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, yeah, I called my guy. He says, oh, yeah, don't worry about the Prince concert. I got you. So I said, okay. <clears throat> Wifey like, oh, I want to get tickets to the Prince. I said, you don't need to get tickets. We already got that. I said, you know, we do the backstage, do all the stuff. It doesn't matter. So long story, I'll fast forward a little bit. We go down to the Prince concert to get in. We can't get in. <laughs> and I go, oh, no, my dude's supposed to be at the door. Right. He said uh, he got me. I hate those situations. And I'm like, we didn't buy no ticket. Right. She said the whole time, see, I told you we should have got tickets. We should have did this. And I'm like, let me call him. And I go, ah, oh, man, my other phone, my production phone is at home. <laughs> I had two phones and brought the wrong phone. Right. I had to go back home and get my phone. So I goes back home and get my phone. And on the way back down, I look, we didn't live super far. Mm-hmm. Like it's like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Show hasn't started yet, but people filling in. So when we get back, there's no lines. Everybody's inside. It's thick. Yeah. It's everybody inside. But it ain't started yet. Yeah. But ain't no lines no more. Right. She's like, I told you we should have got tickets. We're going to miss the show. Right. And I roll up. I call my guy. And he goes, hey. He said, hey, man, I got you. I got you. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry. I apologize. Don't worry about this. I get in. We get there. He goes, hey, I got you guys. I think we like second or third row. I don't know. Center stage. He walk us. He walk us all the way down to the front. And we're like, oh. She was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> She's now happy. Right. So he says, when we get done, he says, we got another private show. Mm -hmm. He says, all you got to do is just see me out here. I'll meet you when we get done. Just come out here and we go to the private show. Mm -hmm. So we get done. I have a drink. I go. Show was great. We out there. I don't see him. And then I go. Your boy? My boy. Okay. Okay. We at the, at the, where he told us to meet us, where he saw us outside. Mm -hmm. He said, meet him there. So I didn't see him. I said, oh, it's no big deal. I know where the show spot is. Mm -hmm. So I just go over to the show spot. Mm -hmm. So at that time, one of my guys that was my guy, he ain't my guy no more. I won't say his name. He was with me. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's go. So he said, where are you going? I said, we got this private after party. You can go with me because you do music with me at the time. So let's go. We go over there. I get to the place. Prince people, none of the managers, everybody I know, nobody's there yet. I can't get in yet. So I goes to the owner of the building because I've done shows there. Mm-hmm. I say, hey, man, you know me. What's up? Hey, he said, hey, man. He said, it's sold out. I can't get you in here. He said, they're not letting nobody in because it's a private party. Mm-hmm. I said, but I know so-and-so. We got this set up. And he said, no. Nah. 
And I'm like, dude, you know me. Like, right. I've been doing stuff with you. Why would I lie? Right. As I'm saying that. They're walking up. Prince them people, the bus pull up. They getting off the off the bus and they said, Darren, hey, how many people you got with you? This literally just happened with me and Travis Scott. <laughs> This literally just happened with me and Travis Scott. Remember when I was at All Star Weekend? Oh yeah! And I was like, same thing. I was walking, and I'm like, my homies Jordan Brand. They're like, oh yeah, Travis Scott inside, da, da, da. and then they just brought me in. Same exact thing. That's so funny. <sighs> and it happens, and he goes, oh, just go. And, and my boy goes, oh, come on, how many people you got? I said, it's four, but she said, come on. We just go in, and the owner of the building that has the whole, he's still owner right now, <laughs> that has the whole spot. He looked at me like. I can't believe this. And he mad, just looking at me. <laughs> and I walk in, we having a great time. Right. right. So here's the craziest part of the whole story. The way I remember this story, okay? Some might change the story if you was there that night, but this how it went. We in there, we in, in the middle of the room, closer to the front. Mm-hmm. Prince is playing. And then you got the guitar. He's doing his solo. He's having a good time. Now, if y'all know anything about Prince, he said no cameras, no stuff back then. Right. Like, nobody really had cell phone cameras Just like that. Out. Yeah. Well, my boy pulls out the camera and he takes a picture of Prince while he's doing his guitar solo. Prince stopped the show. <laughs> so who just took a picture of me? <laughs> Because the flash did like this. Right. And then security go like this. We over here. And the security coming like this. And my boy, the one that got me in there goes, oh, he went Darren. Prince started back playing the show. They turned around and went the other way. My boy took the camera, put it in his pocket, and developed. That's crazy. It did. So later when we see the picture, it was kind of blurry because. Remember, you met him, the so the uh, pictures you go yeah, like you this. Yeah, you got to wind it. You got to wind it. He had yeah. to wind it like this. Yeah. And he goes, sneak and hurry up, take a picture. So he but, moved. Yeah. So it moved a little bit. So a little blurry. But he developed a picture and had the picture. It was crazy. You got through the 90s. 2000s come around. Now you're talking about you're working still. Um, I'm going off to college. My sister's going into high school. Restaurants going. So, what was that like? That experience was like super dope for me. Like, I really enjoy, like, if anybody knows, or like, I cook ribs, I cook chicken. Like, I, I really enjoy doing that part mm -hmm. and letting people eat and kind of fellowship with each other and all that. So, for people to come in your restaurant and, and take the time to spend money, and we were probably one. a whole nother order to go right like, shit like, good. You, like really think to yourself like yeah. how many times you've ordered food and then why you eat and go i need to order some of this to go because right. i want some more of this later so many people traveling from far <laughs> so do we talk about it now or do we talk about it later what about me getting fired oh, no. <laughs> we'll talk about that in another episode no but but no we can talk about that later but i think that was my only job I had. But I think um, with that whole story, I want to really go into it right now. I have to be the highest or the most, the, the expectation is going to be the highest for those people mm -hmm. in building a brand. Like, again, like you're building a brand, right? You're not going to let me go out and just do anything in your brand. Right. You've told me sometimes, hey, dad, you can't say that. Can't say that. Can't wear that. You can't wear that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're building a brand. I respect you every single time, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know what it takes to build a brand. Mm -hmm. I'll even say one time, throw this for a twist. 
this doesn't even have to do with building a brand. It's about a person building themselves mm-hmm. from one thing to another, young man to older man or whatever you want to call it. I'm in the car with him and he's driving. And I was like, hey, you can't do this. You can't do that. And he go, this is my car, my gas. You don't like it. You can walk. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And look, I sat back. I'm quiet because I understand you're in a young man trying to grow to be an old man, right? Right. And so when you see, he didn't say exactly like that. I'm just kidding. But real close to that. <laughs> like, this is my duck. You catch the feathers. <laughs> so long story short, as you're doing certain things, like you respect like certain things, you see it. like, And now you're in that position. And I've told you a lot of times. Mm-hmm. You're not going to build your brand or do what you want to do unless you cut something off or cut this off or whatever. Mm-hmm. And in his, going back to him for a second, He's the head of the snake. And so I had to sacrifice my son for the brand. I had to sacrifice certain things because he's the head of the snake. If anything happens in the world, when you get into a group of people, you got to take out the biggest guy, the baddest guy, the fastest guy, the strongest guy, whatever it is, right? The bully Whoever it is, you have to say, okay, only way you can get other people's attention is take the head off the snake, Mm -hmm. right? From day one, since you was a little kid, you've always been the head of a snake. Mm -hmm. Either people are going to like you or go, I don't like him for nothing. He's the head of the snake. Some people don't like snakes. Some people scared to get bit. Everything. Right. And I'm and I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying, but it's a metaphor. I'm not a snake. It's right. like where you go, things move behind. That's it. And I'll I'll leave the rest alone. We'll talk. Yeah, about so basically it. he fired me. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to tiptoe around it. Nah, but okay, so restaurants going, you got that. And then, you know, I'm off the And then, like, tell us what happened and how you felt, and I'll tell you my side. On which part? Just about, like, no longer working there. Oh, uh, so. Like, the was... day you found out, everything <laughs> that would happen. So, I had went to, I was the head of the um, Teamsters Union um, at our location. And so, all the negotiations went through me for, um every three years, so 15 years or something. So we renegotiate the contracts everything every three years. And so I was part of that. And so as I seen things evolving and we was making changes, I told everybody like, hey, you know, like if we don't if we don't sign this contract, we'll probably lose our jobs because we had, they implemented they had us implement so many new things. Mm-hmm. It made the process faster. And it was kind of mm-hmm. one of those things you see now you work yourself out of work. Mm-hmm faster you go, the better you get. They're like, well, we don't need you no more. Right, right, right. Right? And so once we did that, they go, we're not going to need these guys. So they literally told us, if you don't sign this contract, you guys won't have a job. But they told me that because the manager, like most of my bosses, I trained them. At that time, we had a lot of, this is Oregon. So we had a lot of people that they didn't let black folks to be the head boss, but we was the middleman. And so I trained all my bosses to be my boss. So they came to me and said, hey, 
because we used to be drinking partners hanging out. And they said, hey, if you don't sign this contract, you ain't going to have a job. So I went back to the union and I said, the um, plant up to Lacey, Washington. Mm -hmm. This is 2013. Beginning to the uh, end of 2012, going into 2013. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I'm going, no, this is not good. Everybody's like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm telling you guys this was going to happen. So when it came down to it, they had this board I sat on. And I sit on this product. You guys can check the newspaper article. I don't remember the number. I'm going to say 300 million. But it might be 100 million. I don't remember. So I sit on this board and I now asking for money mm -hmm. to make sure this plant goes back in effect and we can keep all the people here. Mm -hmm. And they come and tell us, they first told me, they go, hey, Darren, you need, they wrote this script out. You need to say these things. And I look at the script, I go, I don't talk like that. Right. Not racial, but I said, this is hella white. Right. This is how white people talk. Right. I'm black. Don't talk like that. So they says, oh, okay, well, you, you know, don't don't try to say too much off of what, we, what we're trying to do. So I went in there and told them straight up. I said, we're in a position now that you guys want to take this job from us. And we've all, some of our guys, because we made good money. Some mm -hmm. of our guys didn't work. Uh, their wives didn't work. Mm -hmm. We made dough. Right. The faster you work, more you get paid. Right. So we end up um, going to have the meeting. And I have a conversation with these people on this panel after they told me to say all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't speak like that. So, they, so when I got done, well, in the midst of that conversation, I actually had everybody on the panel in tears because it was a point that I started crying because I said, I've been doing this for so many years, 23 years, working on my retirement, everything for my kids. I said, but you guys are dealing me a hand that I don't want to play. Right. I said, I'm able to put my son in college, but now by taking this job from me, I won't be able to do my daughter the same way. Mm-hmm. And I said, you guys are taking, you're robbing me for something I gave you 100% of, you know. And it was jacked up. And they seen it. They didn't give us the money. <laughs> they didn't change it. Nothing. You know how that go. And even the people. He's like to do with the key back in the day. He <laughs> said, oh, okay, cool. Give me that. <laughs> Just like that in the back of the they day. They understand your story, but they don't care. Right. Right. So we went through that. And again, we lost everything. Lost all the jobs, and uh, they told us we could move to a different city and get our jobs back, mm -hmm. but we come in at the bottom of the total pole. Start all over. Start over with no seniority and new pay at half the wages. What a deal. <laughs> but you're going to travel an hour and something away. So, yeah, I remember hearing it, and I'm like, damn. Like, I wanted to cry, too, because I'm like, I just saw how much you put into it. For so many years. Yeah. From like working there, working at the other job that you was working at that time, which then became the job that you was working, your new job. Well, actually, no. That one closed too. That closed, but that so, was after. I was working for the steel factory. Yeah, you was a working full time for this, job in Sealy. Right. Uh -huh. And the steel factory, which was Freightliner. All three of them closed. All three of them closed at the same, shortly after each other. But Freightliner said, we're going to move all our work to Mexico. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make all our parts in Mexico. And we were making all the steel parts, brake pedals, drums, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And when they moved to Mexico, y'all check the records. I keep saying this every time. Freightliner went to <laughs> when they moved to Mexico. Yeah. Because the parts wasn't U.S. made. They weren't good anymore. Yeah. So it was just, it was crazy to see like that and remembering like, when you fired me and me telling you like, I'll never work for somebody again. And then like, see, you have to go through that, which I made the decision to never do. And I'm like, damn, you had to go through that again and let somebody else control your fate. 
uh, which was something I was like, again, like you said, you set me up for a position to never let somebody else control my fate. Mm-hmm. And then I'm watching it happen. So it's like, oh, yeah, I got to figure it out. Whether that's Three me, like, places. get into the properties with real estate, flipping kicks, starting the channel, building a business online, doing different stuff, but always finding a way to try to, like, control my destiny as much as I can. Yeah. So, yeah, it was crazy, like, seeing that. And then, yeah, a couple months later, then I got in a car accident and everything was rough, and then, yeah. which is a whole other story. But when you got in your car accident, it was the same month the the mattress company closed. It was like all within like a month. Yeah. And so the only thing I said to the wife was, well, at least I ain't got to go to work. <laughs> right. I can take care of them. <laughs> I can stay. And I, we went to LA or California during your accident. I go, I'm not coming home until my son can come home. Right. Well, I ain't got no job. You know, we get, we was hotel to hotel. First, we started out, we started out in the, Fat hotels. <laughs> Dog, we started out in the fat While hotels. While I was in the hospital. <laughs> oh, yeah. We was like, oh, we're going to stay at the Hilton. We're going to stay here. Whatever, right? About a weekend, like a whole week. Like, oh, this is going to be expensive. Like, we're going to be in there for We're going to be here for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and so then we were like, oh, okay, we're going to notch it down a little bit. Yeah. We go over to this place. Like, she looks up online. We're going to go to this hotel. We get to the hotel. Y'all ever been to those cheap hotels that smell like bleach? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and the people hanging around outside. Yeah. And so we got there to the hotel. We pulled up. We was about to go in. We was like, we can't do this. We can't do this. And then we left. We didn't even, I don't think we ever went in the place. Seriously. We went in. We didn't go into the hotel room. Excuse me. Went into the lobby area. And you could just smell that. That bleach over sanitized <laughs> smell, nothing fresh, like stench and in the, in the, like the stickiness on the floor. It was like, we need to get here because it's like $39, you know? Hell no. <laughs> yeah. So- off the bridge just like but i didn't do that obviously you know like you got so much more to live for but you know i don't know if y'all got faith in you but they say the good lord won't put nothing on you you don't believe you can handle right you know and i got it all at once Mm -hmm. i got a lot at once my restaurant closed you know shortly after you know the accident yeah yeah you uh my uh, company closed after 23 years that I was at mm-hmm. full pension, all the stuff I'm doing. Yo, car accident. I'm like barely functional. Yeah. You didn't know nothing. Yeah. Like you came from not knowing nothing. And so when you're going through this stuff, you're like, how much more can I handle? Bills is tight. Everything's tight. You're just trying to figure out like, what can I do at this point? Mm-hmm. You know, my business partner had stole so much money from me during the restaurant that when i closed i was upside down you're right we're making a half a million dollars a year and i'm upside down in debt when you're thinking you got money right and you find out because we took the account he was doing the account and we find out he was transferring the money so you don't see it on the uh bank statement the same way Mm -hmm. and he was transferring it online from hit from the company account directly into his bank account mm-hmm. so that if like i'm not a bank person so i don't know how to do right. it right like you're that. like you literally was the one still this one uh, <laughs> go to the cat he's the type that still to this day will go to the atm or to the bank to check his balance <laughs> so he was able to just fundle all that money funnel all that money and uh it was messed up so, like, again, you just got all this, but it's like all these things compound. Teenage, youth, whatever. And it's just like still like for me outside looking in, like seeing it all. I was like, we can take touch points from the conversation. Right. Of like, I remember this. Okay, now I see how it allowed you to grow from it and then how it impacted you and made you change now. And then it again, you got another wave that comes at you. This is like different things. So uh, it's dope to see you like get through it and then like find ways to 
you know, still be saying coming out of it. It's tough. But again, uh, if y'all seen any part of the early part of what I said, when I'm going through it, then it's easy for me to go. And it's weird because you don't even know it happens. But it's weird how some days when like I'm having a crappy ass day or whatever. And then you'd be like, what are you doing? You'll just hit me or it takes me out of clear blue. Like, what's going on? Like, how nothing? What's up? He's like, oh, I got food. You want to go eat or you want to do this? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, get me away from all this right now. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those things like you don't ever know. Like, again, you guys got family. You, you brighten a person's day. You take that moment in time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just makes it better. It makes you like, okay, this is what I'm living for. This right. is what I'm trying to do. And, right. you know, you get, you get that little reward. Sometimes you pay for lunch where I pay for lunch. It's not about who paid for it. It's about the time we got to spend. Mm -hmm. And so we get that moment in time. And it's like, man, I needed that, you know, to have that conversation or whatever, you know, catch up on your day or catch up on mine. Mm -hmm. And the and, uh, same thing with my daughter as well. So, you know, sometimes she'll do the same thing. Dad, have you ate? You know, because y'all know me. I'm like, I can get up in the morning and I'll work all day. And go, oh, it's 10 o'clock at night. I haven't ate today. Right. So I'm one of those people. Mm -hmm. So y'all say, you, you did this, you did that. No, nah, I haven't done that, whatever. Okay. So like, mm -hmm. for me, that's my escape a lot of times. And, mm -hmm. and I'm, am I looking for it? No. Does it happen at the oddest times and be one of the best times? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so I enjoy it. You know, y'all got parents or whatever. Take the time to go spend time with them. Definitely. You know. Yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy the way life is set up. Like. It's hard to like, I don't know if you say entertain everybody or whatever you want to call it, but just be with everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's like whenever somebody's on your mind, you got to just like hit them in the moment. Like yeah. you know, whether that's like more often than not or less than somebody wants it to be at the same time, if they can appreciate that, like you're still trying to reach out and yeah. whenever you can, I feel like that's the most important thing too, yeah. because I know a lot of people could be like, well, I don't, I still don't hit them enough or I don't do this. I don't do that. Or they can make you feel bad for not hitting them enough. But it's like some people don't even get to, like, oh, I only hit them three times. So it's like some people don't even hit them one time. Right. So it's like but they got to appreciate that you did hit them three times. But the three times is huge, you know. Like everybody, life gets in the way. Yeah. Like we have so much stuff going on. You, you know, we all do. You know, and sometimes it could be meetings or sometimes it could be editing or whatever the case may be. Right. The dog is sick or whatever. You got to do this. Groom it. Life gets in the way. But it's kind of dope. Like you can take a moment and go, "Hey, I'll see you." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and I'm not saying I'm not saying I don't see my son, y'all. I see my son a, a lot, <laughs> <laughs> all over the internet. <laughs> hey, real quick, I remember one time he was a kid, and and we were at the store. I think I told you this. We were at the store, and one of my friends go, "Hey, man, that's your son." And I was like, "Yeah, man." You know, we halfway dressed alike, doing our thing. And and uh, he goes, man, that's kind of dope you out with your son. He goes, I ain't seen mine in months. And you, you was like, looking at him like, you ain't seen your son in months? <laughs> You're like, that, that don't even make sense. Right. Because we were together, you know, at that time, he was living at the house. And so we was together every day, mm -hmm. you know. When I went to go hoop all the time, you'd be at the gym. Mm-hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and so everybody else was taking their kids. They wouldn't take their kids. They'd take them to babysitter. I'm like, you going to the gym. Right. Like, you going with me. I'll have to go get it in. You know, so yeah. anyway, not to bore y'all with that stuff, but it's, it's, again, like I said, take the moment of time with people when you can, because, you know, you know, obviously no day is promised, but every day works out and it'd be a good thing. Mm -hmm. you know? So, all right, we can continue to go on forever. Not emotional shit. <laughs> We I can, mean, stuff. <laughs> we could go on forever and ever uh, about a bunch of different topics. So if you guys, again, you guys already, for those that are subscribed, you've seen them on the channel. Um, it was only right that we, you know, got a, a podcast episode with them, especially since the podcast is new. Got some little fire around questions for you, and then you got a rapid fire, and then we got the last statement for them. So all right. first question. Uh, what is the greatest sneaker of all time? The greatest sneaker of all time. Red 11 to me. Red 11. Interesting. So Henry said Jordan 11's on the last one, too. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. I thought you were going to say Air Force One. 
Um, well, for me to wear. But, but, but the Bread 11, to me, go. I feel it. Okay. Yeah. So, out of all the sneakers that you have in your collection, which one would you wear for, like, the rest of your life? Like, it's like, I can only wear one shoe. This is what I'm wearing. I'm horrible. <laughs> Air Force One, all black. <laughs> all black forces. <laughs> I, I, I got a lot of whites because I because they get messed up more yeah. faster. You could you could say that's a valid reason why it's smart to have a pair of all black forces. I get it. Yeah. I don't know if I'll let you pass, but I was know. wearing. I've been wearing them lately, and the lady said, "I don't trust you." You got an all black Air Force Ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny that's funny okay okay else? um how many pairs of shoes do you have in your collection about 85 you sure you got to be over 100 by okay, now. 110 yeah, but I, you <laughs> might be 150 hundreds and fifties i think you might be over no but i'll be wearing my shoes and then i i, I lose count okay okay so uh last question if you had tip or advice to your young self um, that you would give to the audience now, what would you say? If I had to tell my young self, what would I say to my young self? <sighs> don't change. I tell people, don't change. Um, when I say that, of course, you're going to evolve, mm -hmm. right? But be who you are. In the moment, be who you are. Don't allow somebody else to change you to be something you're not. And not your dog. Be who you are. Allow people to accept you for who you are. Mm -hmm. You're going to grow into who you are every day and be a different person. 20 years from now, you don't want to be the same thing as 17 as 50. But don't change a lot. And the reason why I'm saying it is because the worst thing to do is to wake up one day and you've changed so much trying to have, make somebody else happy. You're not you and you're not happy with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like it. I think that's a good one. <laughs> so we ended off with uh, make sure you guys subscribe. If you guys enjoy this, share it to your friends. Hit that like button. And uh, we got plenty more episodes coming. Appreciate Last thing, you guys. If y'all got always. any questions for me, ask me. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. And if you guys want to check out his channel, go check out his channel as well. I'll, I'll link that at the end of the video or down below in the description. We got to find some new creative ways to get him some videos up because he is not good when it comes no, to actually the creating part the videos and posting editor. them. He was my editor. <laughs> y'all have to understand, he's too big now, so he can't edit for me anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll figure it out. All right, you guys. I'm out. <laughs> All right. for editor yeah right uh, hey so if y'all want to edit for me let me know and we'll get it set up <laughs>